for pricing, I, you know, I kind of looked at it hourly, how much time it takes. And then I kind of try to factor in like, results. What kind of results is this going to provide? So my setup fee, obviously, is one of the lowest because it does not, it, it gets results as and it adds people to your list. But then the sales sequence and the um, nurture sequence, that is more results driven because the, that's actually the pe com converting the people on your list to customers. That The goal of that is is to convert those people. Welcome to the Web Design Business Podcast with your host, Josh Hall, helping you build a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hello, friend. Lovely to have you here for this episode. I say lovely because it is a lovely day outside right now at the time of recording this. So I'm in good spirits, not only because of that, but because of this episode. We are going to take a deep dive into offering email marketing as a web design service. So we're going niche in this one. Now, the really cool thing about email is that email's back, baby. Email is more important than ever. And there's so many opportunities to offer email marketing for web design clients, apart from just doing email marketing yourself uh, to grow your business. But you can actually, if interested, use this as a service to help grow your client's business and to bring traffic to the website. But the question is, how do you offer email marketing? How do you sell it? What's included in it? What are the variables for managing email marketing? Well, good news, if you're interested in offering this, or maybe it is something you're doing just kind of on the side, this episode is really going to pull back the curtain of somebody who is doing this very well and who has email marketing as one of her primary services. This is one of my students, April Ray, who I've been fortunate to see grow her business from a freelancer to a full-time solopreneur, and now she's scaling. And email marketing is a big part of her business. This is April Ray. And wow, she has done such a great job of refining her business over the past few years. And one thing I like about what I've seen her do is she's taken my principles and recommendations for having three categories of services. So real quick, before she comes on, for those who don't know, if you have not yet been through my business course, which is inside of Web Designer Pro, what I teach in there is to have three categories of services. One category for building services, like building and redesigning websites. One category for supporting your websites through hosting, maintenance, care, and ongoing support. And then the third category is to help clients grow their business with their website. Now, the third category, you can do whatever your heart desires. For April, she has chosen email marketing because she has learned a lot about it and found out that she enjoys it. She's good at it. And in this episode, she really does pull back the curtain on how she offers it, how she sells it, what's included. And I really think it's going to help you if you're interested in offering email marketing for your clients. So can't wait to hear what you think. Please let us know your thoughts on this episode. Go to joshhall.co slash 257 to drop a comment and to check out all the resources that we're going to be mentioning in this episode, which we'll have linked over there. And before I bring on April, I highly recommend if you want some inspiration on how to have a successful solo web design uh, business, check out aprilraycreative.com. You can go over there to connect with her and to see everything that we're talking about here on this episode. Without further ado, here's April to share everything that she's learned and offering email marketing for her web design clients. April, welcome officially to the show. You've been you one of my first students I talk about you, I feel like I've talked about you a lot on the show recently, and I feature your website and some of your stuff and some presentations I do. So I feel like this is long overdue. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, we have like several topics that we explore diving into, and I think we're going to get to some of those in, in different regards moving forward. But I thought what might be really interesting today is to focus on email marketing for web designers, I know that's something you have experience in, in kind of two different areas, it seems like. what So what you're doing, like email marketing for you for marketing, but then also you're doing email marketing for clients now, right? Maybe maybe we can go backwards. Maybe we can like start with how, well, how you're offering email marketing now, and then I'd love to get a little bit of the backstory that led you here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so with my clients, I, um, you know, I obviously offer web design as a main thing, but such a big part of that is 
making sure we capture the people who get on your website and then maybe bounce off and forget about you. But we want to capture those leads and we do that through email marketing. So I offer pretty much three different things uh, in like a package form offer like a, a setup um, email marketing setup where I, I, I use Flowdesk primarily. Um, I was an early adopter of it by accident and uh, love it. It's great. It's beautiful. Um, but I'll go in and I'll set up their brand settings and set them up with um, like a, a lead magnet, a form, um, a workflow so that people can automatically get that response back. All those things uh, even might even set them up a template like for a newsletter or something that they can go in and reuse. So that's like the setup package. And then I offer a sales sequence package, which Josh, have you read? Um, I know we've all read Story Brand, <laughs> uh, but Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller. I have not read that yet. Is it good? I kind of wonder good. what the difference was between that and Story Brand. Yeah, it's good. It's very practical. Uh, okay. It like gives you, it shows you like, here is what you put in your header on your website. <laughs> ah. it's, uh, I, I recommend it to my clients a lot. So, Well, it's um, funny you mentioned Donald Miller because I just like a couple of weeks ago sent a request to his team to see if he'd be interested ooh. in coming on the show. So oh, if he man, does, I will read that. And then that's my public um, that, that's my public commitment. I'll read that book and try to get Donald on. That'd be great. Yeah. And it's, it's really short. I keep it in my desk because that's oh, how nice. I use it awesome. um, because it's so practical. But one of the chapters he has is on sales sequences and just, it's the kind of the intentional path that you want your client to take or your potential client to take. So they get that lead magnet. Then they get the next step of like, okay, here is the problem you're facing and here is how I can solve it. Mm. That's one of the emails. Then there's an email on testimonials or case studies. There's an email about, um, I'm trying to think, like a paradigm shift about how like now you understand this information and this is why you're going to hire me. And like um, there's one more and I'm totally blanking on it. But um, And then there's a final sale email. So um, it's like five emails and it just kind of intentionally walks someone through the journey of like of the buying decision. Mm. And, and so you're, that's when you're able to apply that for your clients, but then for you too, right? Like, I guess yeah. that's one cool thing about email marketing. If it works for a client, you can put it in your own business. Yeah. Yeah. So I do that with my, my business, with my clients, I'll bring in for the sales sequence. I bring in my copywriter. So she writes all the copy and then I go in and design the emails um, and set up all the automation and everything. And then the final thing I offer is ongoing newsletters uh, or monthly email blast. And mm. then that also ties in with SEO, which I'm doing stuff with Michelle. So it all kind of uh, ties in together. But yeah, those are those are kind of the three big services I offer in email marketing. Oh, that's so great. And if anyone goes to your website and wants to check out how you display these services, you do, April, you do such a great job. It's one reason why I view you as like a a plus case study student. I've seen your brand really just mature over the years, which has been so cool. And the way you have your services, the big three website design, monthly mm -hmm. plans, email marketing. What's interesting about this is I feel like you followed what I share in the business course, which is to have three different categories of services, one for mm -hmm. website builds, which could entail redesigns and any sort of building work. Mm -hmm. And then monthly care, hosting, maintenance, all the stuff, which I, that was the first course you joined. I think you were didn't we look at it recently? I think you were in like my first five or 10 students in my uh, maintenance plan course. Like you, Which is you, crazy. I didn't even realize you just launched it. I figured it had been up for years. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, like Richard, who I had on a little bit ago, he said he was like waiting and then uh, he was hoping to be the first. Um, so yeah, it was like one of those where, yeah, you joined it. Had, you didn't know I just launched it. But I say that to say, I've seen you, you know, since I started teaching, I've seen this evolve. And then you have your your email marketing, which is in the grow the grow category that's mm -hmm. and grow could really be so many different things. It can be SEO like you're doing. It can be email marketing. It could be social media marketing, digital marketing, whatever. What made you, cause I want to get a little bit of the backstory on how you got into the email marketing side of things. And maybe this will answer that question, but I'm kind of curious from your perspective, April, like why email marketing? When did, when did that come into the, the forefront for you? So it's funny because um, I, I, I have experience in a lot of different digital marketing arenas. I started in higher education 
actually. Um, I was in college and I got a job working for the provost and vice president of academic affairs. <laughs> I had to answer the phone like that. Oh, what a title. <laughs> um, and so they used constant contact mm. and I hated it. <laughs> One of my earliest yeah. uh, reasons I had to use like HTML code because you, you would just go in, the formatting would be all messed up and you had mm. to go into the code to fix it. And so I hated it. And then five years goes by, I'm back in another higher ed college situation working as the director of marketing and our director of PR, she did the email marketing, but she would have me come and edit the newsletter because it was so frustrating and it was still constant contact and it still was awful. It was just so hard to use. Um, and I, so when I launched my business, I intentionally left email marketing out of my services that I offered. I offered oh. all sorts of stuff. I offered like logo design and video editing and all these things I don't do anymore. Really. I feel like I remember that. It was like a buffet <laughs> of April services. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't know. I'm just going to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. So it was really one of those situations, but I left off email marketing cause I hated it. I thought it was mm. awful. I was like, no one's reading this crap. It is super hard to use any of these platforms. Well, I was only using Constant Contact. And I think they're one of the oldest ones. Um, and since then, lots of better ones have come along. Um, so anyways, I was in a business group. Actually, you interviewed Ellen, um, uh, my old business coach. I was in her business group and she had us do a like guest coach call with the founders of Flowdesk mm. in 2019 when they just launched it. So we were like one of their beta tester groups. And so when they showed us the platform, I'm like, oh, this could work. This actually looks like it's intuitive. It's beautiful. It's very um, clean and elegant and simple. Um, it There's no coding <laughs> involved, which I know how to do now, but you don't want to have to do that every time you go in and want to send an email. Yeah. Um, so I, I started doing it for myself and I quickly offered it to a few of my top clients. Like, Hey, I just started doing Flowdesk. They were in my business group with me. So they're like, we want to use it, but we don't really know how I'm like, I figured it out. Let me, let me try it for you. And so I just started offering it that way. And then, um, Donna Miller's book talks a lot about email marketing. So I'm like, these are the services. This is what I can do. I can do this well. It goes really well with design and um, and websites and growing and all that stuff. So yeah, that's that's where that kind of started. <laughs> I love that. It's how ironic that you intentionally didn't want to do it because you had a sour experience with it previously. And then now it's one of your driving, like it's, it's really a differentiator for you compared to a lot of other web designers, which you're such a great example, April, of having a service that is a bit specialized, but in the umbrella of web design, like you are a web designer, but you have specialty in maintenance and email marketing. Whereas like, I don't know if you talk about SEO a level back with clients, but it's not something that you project out there. Like you're not an SEO person. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's not what it looks like on the website, but that's fine. Like you don't have to be, and you don't have to be a digital marketer. You don't need to run everyone's social media if you don't want to. If you like email marketing and you know it and you're getting results, then by golly, feature that in that third grow category. Because that really is, I think one thing I've learned over the past couple of years in particular, teaching and coaching a lot of web designers, is you can do whatever you want in that third category. Mm -hmm. Have the first two be build websites and then do hosting and maintenance. And there's all the different types of models. You could do VIP days and day rates in that, or you can do subscription like our friend Steve Schramm shares. Um, or you could do my model with the one-off websites and just do hosting and maintenance. But that third category, that's your time to shine. That's what you can like really customize. So I love that you're doing email marketing. And I, I do think it's a good time for it too, because there's, I don't know, have you seen there to be this resurgence of email and the importance of email nowadays? Yes, absolutely. I really thought it was dying. <laughs> I think that's another reason why I didn't want to offer it as a service because when I worked for the college, they would send out these extremely long emails. And I'm like, only people who are reading this are retirees, which is probably their ideal client because they wanted people to uh, donate to the college. Uh. But, um, the, you know, it, it was really just um, not practical, I felt, and not a, a good, you know, I, at the college we were, I 
our ideal client was students. And so I'm like, they're not reading these emails. This is not important. But then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but it has, it's just been like everyone email does email marketing. We get these weekly emails, these short bits, we'll get longer, like newsletter type emails that, you know, I even read, like I, I enjoy those now because they're, they're done in a very engaging and authentic way, I think. Mm. And not so much of professional PR writing. Um, you know, you learn about the business owner, you learn about the person behind the brand. And I think that's, that's hugely important in making it successful and making it different than what it was in its early days. So I think at some point here in this conversation, I might uh, turn the tables on you and have you coach me on some email stuff <laughs> because I have this nagging like feeling and this nagging pull to do a weekly newsletter. Finally, I mean, I send emails weekly about the podcast and anything going on, but I don't have a specific like newsletter or like weekly dose of Josh. I don't know. I have no idea what to call it, but my thought was to do something like that. That is very raw, real curtain back, transparent, short, sweet, like something that would just be maybe lessons that I learned that week or something I'm thinking about. That's kind of what I'm thinking about for my business that I think would be a good next phase. And quite frankly, we both have little kids. I don't always want to be on video and it's hard sometimes <laughs> to do a bunch of videos. So the thought of like, once the littles are down and I could get my laptop out and just write for 10 minutes, it sounds awesome. Like I, I really, I think I'm not going to like that. So, um, what would you suggest? Like, I don't know. Well, let's just dive into that now. What do you think about that idea? And is that something you'd recommend for clients and for web designers? Absolutely. So I think there's a little testing that goes into it because I have done weekly emails before and my audience just does not respond as well to it. They don't open it as much. And so I, I don't, for me, I have not found it working and also for time sake, you know, uh, but I know a lot of people that weekly is what works best because you don't have to do a huge long newsletter once a month. Um, but what I recommend, and actually I've just created a, a freebie uh, with a template on how to do this. But so you essentially, um, you have four topics each month and you can do them as like a monthly newsletter, or you can do them as a weekly email and do one a week. And you can even take those and do those as social media posts. Um, <clears throat> but I always recommend something personal to connect with your audience, some sort of tip, advice, or service, some sort of like little quick win, maybe something you've learned this week that you want to pass on, a testimonial, a case study, and then a resource, like a book you just uh, read or podcast you found. Um, and it makes it really valuable. It um, it really connects with people well. So um, I, I've, I have found that to work really well and it can be used however you want. I've, I've seen people even do all four of these in one email every week. And then that's their four social media posts. Mm. And then they've got their content for the month because they, they create all of these every week and you know, it works really well. So I and love it sorry, I, go I, ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I love that idea of repurposing that those categories of content. It, it reminds me of what I learned from Amy Porterfield and her uh, list builder society course, which is to have like those different types of content, personal fat, like quick win education. Um, and then yes, yeah, success stories and then resources. And then, uh, mm -hmm. her recommendation is to add some sort of sales generally, uh, if yeah. you're going to do a promotion or something like that, uh, occasionally to sprinkle it in. My question yeah, with that though is like, quarterly. yeah, yeah. And, now, devil's advocate, if I'm going to repurpose this, this on social media, then why would somebody give me their email if, can, if they could just find it on social media? Oh, social media is way too crowded. They are not mm. seeing every one of your posts. That's and that, that's I mean, it's the great thing about social media is that you can get on there and see all sorts of different content every week. But people are generally not seeing your stuff every week. Mm. Um, with email, they are more likely to catch all of the great content that you have. And so you just, I mean, yeah, with the algorithm, with social media, now you just, unless you are doing it as an ad, you just can't guarantee that people are going to see everything that you post. Oh, that's such a relief to hear. Uh, <laughs> cause I kind of wonder, I mean, I asked that tongue in cheek because I, I figure that's where this would, would get to, but I also, <laughs> in all honesty, it is like, it's one reason I haven't done that yet. Cause it's like, well, all my content's already out there, but I think the idea of centralizing it and I, I almost like the idea of a weekly recap, quite frankly. And mm -hmm. I don't know, like you've been 
you've been a listener of the show. You've been a student for many years now, April. Like, would you find that valuable if at over the weekend or something, if I sent an email just highlighting some of the things that I dished out this week and that I learned, like, would that be valuable for you as yeah. a web design student? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, the ones with uh, web design pro, I bet you that are, I don't know if they're automatically sent out or if you gather them, but like the top post of the week, I always read those because I, I don't always have time to actually hop in, but then I can see what's been happening. Like, do I, should I make the time to hop in right now so I can respond to these or, you know, see what's going on. So yeah, I, I absolutely think so. And then also something important to remember is, you know, we always want our emails to be opened, of course, but even if they're not, your email is like a teeny tiny billboard in someone's inbox every single time you send that. And so it's just keeping you top of mind for your prospective clients or your clients or whoever are reading your emails. So every, even if they're not opening all your emails, you are getting that exposure. Okay. What we're doing is literally a live case study on how I'm going to craft my <laughs> weekly emails here when I launch them. So I love the idea of the four categories for sure that could be spliced in there. Maybe not every week, but occasionally like, you know, tweaking mm -hmm. those. I also like the idea of like maybe a something personal, transparent, um, basically a personal note that would be short, snappy, quick to the point. Those other categories. And then kind of like a recap of content that week, particularly for folks like myself or anyone who does a lot of content, I had to learn years ago that not everyone is going to see all of my content. And just like you said, April, if it's on social media that people are connected, they're definitely not going to see everything. So I might release an episode like this week, we're talking on the week that I released episode, my episode with Mike Michalowicz. And in my mind, I'm thinking everyone probably knows that I did that, but maybe not. Like mm -hmm. not everyone saw that on social media. So I love the yeah. idea of a personal, a recap in those four categories somehow to, to put that together. So that's kind of my challenge. I'm literally writing out to myself right now uh, to help me kind of formulate this. Cause I do feel like it's kind of a missing piece in my business that I feel really led to do. And I say that to say, I hope this is helpful for everyone. Cause I think even web designers, maybe even if it's once a month, a monthly newsletter type email that goes out to your clients with some tips and tricks that you learned or what's working well for a, a client of yours. Or if the industry changes and there's a big new thing or clients start hearing about AI and they're freaking out and you can be like, Hey, here's my view on AI. Like, is that, is that something you'd probably recommend for web designers specifically? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, it's just so important to stay top of mind with your clients. And you've talked a lot about this lately, Josh, that, you know, of course, we want new clients, but we need to serve the people we have right now. And so by serving those people, then they can come to you and say, hey, I saw what you wrote about this. Actually, I've been really thinking maybe we should add this to my website or maybe we should go ahead and do a redesign or you know something along those lines. So um, those are the easiest people to sell to. And it's, it's very true because they, you, they already know, like, and trust you. So yeah. And there, yeah, if there's already a relationship there, I, email is, is what like solidifies that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of curious, I guess it might be a little bit different for new subscribers versus current clients, right? Like, would that be two different strategies? For example, let's say you get a client, they pay you, they're on your, mar your, your monthly care plan. The emails that you send them may be different than somebody who signs up for a lead generator, I would imagine. So how would we work how would we cater our email marketing efforts to both of those, like basically a lead versus an actual current client? So that's where the sales sequence comes in handy because mm. you've already set up and you already, it's kind of like a welcome sequence. Welcome to my email newsletter list. And here are the things that I can help you with. And here's why. And, you know, really warming them up. And then once they've gone through that process, then they're added to your weekly newsletter. And then I'll still send a separate email to my clients um, once a month for uh, their maintenance plan. Right. And I try to include like, you know, the information from I, I have captured from their Google Analytics and hey, I've noticed this and that and maybe make a recommendation if I see one. Um, so I still have that separate email for them. But then yeah, you kind of send that lead through that initial sequence. Gotcha. Go to your newsletter. That makes total sense to have a sales sequence versus versus more of a what what would the other be be called? Like a nurture sequence mm -hmm. or something? Or, yeah. or maybe just a weekly I, I never emails remember to call it that. I don't know why, but yes, it is a nurture sequence. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. It's almost like a 
top of mind see, or maybe even if it's not automated, but they just get on your list for like your weekly dose or whatever, mm-hmm. monthly emails, whatever they are. Yeah. Uh, that's I've a good distinction. I've had people with a bigger strategy do a nurture, a full on nurture sequence where they, you know, once they do the sales sequence, then they move into a nurture sequence and they walk them through like maybe a list of tutorials, send out once a week, a tutorial that is, very process driven, like, Mm. okay, step one, watch this tutorial next week. I'll send you the next one. And they have 52 weeks. Uh, yeah, (laughs) but I mean, it's kind of for your new people, it's done and you have a very process way of doing it. I don't like that because you're still having to come up with new content and it's, I don't know, it's, it's a bigger strategy. It's a little more in depth and it just depends on the type, how much content you have to work with. Yeah. 52 weeks too. That sounds like a nightmare to keep track of and automate. Like oh, yeah. if you go in and then you have to, if you want to change something in all the emails, I don't know what the global options look like with Flowdesk or anything else, but that, <laughs> that sounds like, yeah, woo, that's a lot. But I think yeah. that idea of having a, whether it's a challenge or whether it's a sequence or automation or a journey, I still use MailChimp just because I am such a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of guy. And mm-hmm. I have so many zaps going in there. I'm like, I am not changing that unless I absolutely feel led to. Um, but I said to say like in MailChimp, there's journeys. So oh, okay. it's very similar to, uh, I think sequences, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I yeah, do flows and flow desk. Flow, what, oh, flows. Okay. Now I, I want to, at some point here, I would love to talk about when and how you offer email marketing for clients, but a quick question before we get to that, April, how much is too much? Like, I would think the worst thing you'd want to do is overwhelm people. We've all signed up for somebody's email list and it's like 15 emails in like three days. I'm gone. That is not what I'm interested in. So particularly if it's a case of a lead signing up for a legion and they become a client, and if you have like a notification that they get or, or a weekly digest or a monthly digest, my fear would be having too much hit their inbox at the same time. What are your thoughts on that? So, yeah, I agree. And I don't recommend doing multiple emails per week like that. You could probably get by, by with two. I think the biggest thing, though, is setting expectations. And I have seen people do this and I love it when they do this. Hey, I'm going to pop in. You, welcome to my email list. I'm going to pop in the next five days and just kind of give you some information. After that, I swear I'm going to leave you alone. Like, and they'll make it like a little funny, but you know, just setting those expectations that I'm popping in for the next five days. And then you'll hear from me once a month. Um, ah, that's good. So that they know what to expect because yeah, I've gotten those emails and I'm just like every day, multiple times a day. And I'm like, no, I don't want to hear from you old Navy. <laughs> Not this much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I think, I think I bought some made well jeans and, uh, their email marketing was relentless. And I was like, I just can't, I can't do it. I like the jeans, but I am just, if I need to get some more, I'll go buy some, but like, I do not need to get this much. I mean, it was like twice a day. I think at one point it was crazy. So uh, yeah, 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 there is a, it's like a thin line, right. With being top of mind and just being like overly in their face. Yeah. And I think that's where you, you got to watch your your analytics and your uh, email marketing platform. And if you're getting a ton of unsubscribes, pull back a little bit. But <clears throat> yeah, if, uh, if if things are going well, your open rate, rate is good, you probably have hit a good rhythm. So I, I definitely recommend testing and just keeping on top of your analytics and making sure you're, you're seeing what's working and what's not. (laughs) Gotcha. So let's talk about selling email marketing as a service. So you kind of already hit your backstory, which was perfect. Like we didn't need to dive too far into that. I'd love to maybe on a a separate episode, just because your journey has been so cool to see evolve to where you're at now building close to a six figure business. Uh, So you have like you have really refined your processes for building websites. I've seen you really take your maintenance and care plan and hosting to another level. But with email marketing, a lot of my question is, because I never did this, my question would be like, when do you sell this in that process? Do you do you mention it early on and just let them know it's an option as an upsell eventually? Is it a part of... Because email marketing could be a part of the build, I would imagine. If you have mm-hmm. lead generators that you specifically want to have in the site, you may want to do that from the ground up. So yeah, I guess a quick question would be, when when do you sell email marketing? Yeah, so I have... Um, it, it depends on the service. I include on 
most of my websites, I, you know, obviously we have a conversation to see if they're interested in that. And some people are, and some people aren't, but the ones that are, I include the setup as part of the website build. Um, and that is just a great way to lead into more because once they have it set up, then they want to use it. And if they are, don't feel like they can, some, some can, and I've got them set up and they're doing their own thing, but some just want me to do it for them and I've already got them set up. And so it's a great upsell down the road. And what I have mm -hmm. done recently is um, when I am talking to them in the initial discovery call it, or any time during the process, if they mention like, hey, down the road, I might want to do email marketing or I might want to do SEO. I make a note in my system. I use Asana. And so like my last two check marks are bring back up these two things they, they ask for. And so I'll send a wrapping up email at the end of the project and be like, also, That's you great. had mentioned that you wanted these other services. Would you like to go ahead and look into these? Or do you want to wait? And we can look at those in three months. And whichever one they decide, if they want to go ahead, obviously I send them the information, but if they want to wait, I will set myself a note. And in three months, I will go back and say, Hey, I remember you got, you were interested in doing this and you know, upsell then. So I, I have to set myself a lot of timers and notes, but it gets done. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and if you're doing, if you're doing like a monthly recap with clients or a monthly newsletter, what a perfect time to have that in there. Like, by the way, if you're not utilizing our email marketing services, here are some results clients are getting, we could do this for you. Like, a uh, shocking tip for everybody. You can use email marketing, even if you do it once a month to sell services to your current clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I don't recommend only selling. I, I feel like you should also provide value to your clients. Sure. But if you're doing both, absolutely. I always recommend selling, like have a call to action in every single email. <laughs> um, and so you can, you know, you can give them that value. And if they you know, want to take this next step in your, you know, whatever service you're offering, great. You have that option there, but also give value so that they keep coming back to open it. If you're just selling, people get burnout on that. So offer both. <laughs> yes. Yes. The case of the Madewell story, it was like nonstop <laughs> selling. Uh, it was like, good God, which I think it's probably common with clothing stores and stuff. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, the unsubscribe and, and rates for that for clothing must be just astronomical, but they get so many new people. It's like they just churn and burn them. Yeah. So oh, you don't yeah. want to be a churn and burn email marketer. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, April, which by the way, the connection's kind of lagging on me a little bit. I don't know if it's that Kentucky Wi-Fi. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on a cattle farm. So, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let, me, let me see. I'm just checking. I think we're it's back good. now. I just, I, I okay. missed a couple of things you said there. So I just didn't want to miss anything. Um, we should be good though. We use Riverside. So it luckily it, it records locally on your end and it all syncs up. So we should okay. be fine. But I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything there. But one thing I was curious about is how many clients are coming to you. I don't know if you have an exact percentage or just a guesstimate, but how many clients have some sort of email marketing in place and an email list versus have no email marketing at all? I would say about half of my clients at least have some sort of email marketing set up um, because I just push it on every project. And like they literally will need to tell me, no, I don't want to do that. And I'll be like, OK, gotcha. that's fine. But if they I mean, I just kind of include it in my pro process because it's I just find it that important because you well, should at least be capturing those people that visit your site. My, yes. my big tagline on my site is turning visitors into customers and you can't capture the visitors every time. They're not just going to come on your site and immediately request a quote every single person. No, you got to capture those people. So, yes. Yeah. Such, such a great little word of wisdom there. And quite frankly, the way you have your services set up, I feel like you're already really a shining example of your vibe attracts your tribe, particularly when it comes to what somebody wants to do with their website, because you have email marketing uh, as your, one of your main services. So when somebody works with you, they're not going to be sidelined or blindsided by the fact that, oh, April's going to talk about email marketing because it's one of your services. So I'd imagine just by having email marketing front and center, you're getting people who have an interest in it or at least are mm -hmm. open to exploring it. I don't know yeah, if that was intentional point. or, you know, it just uh, it just became such a good results based service for you that you made it pri a priority. But that's definitely how I view it. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it definitely I, I feel like elevates my clients. Uh, site and results because they have, 
you know, the ability to capture those, you know, potential clients when yeah. they come to the site. So, I yeah. also, I think one really important thing that you do, if anyone else is considering offering email marketing is to have the tiered approach. So if everyone goes to aprilraycreative.com, you can check out April services. And you talked about this before April, you have like these, these few different tiers, basically. So there's the email marketing setup, weekly or monthly, and then email sequences. Because I would imagine just like web design, it might depend on the client as far as how needy they are, how savvy they are. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I could almost see eventually you just do email marketing. Uh, <laughs> although it's nice to be able to control the website end of things because it does all work together. But I say that to say like, this could get really complicated real quick, right? Have you learned mm -hmm. to kind of hone in your offers and constrain what you do and how you help? as far as email marketing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll help people with a, a lot of things that they want. I generally don't do much outside of Flowdesk because I know Flowdesk so well. I, I don't offer that. Like now, if I have a client who's like, I'm struggling with MailChimp, I'll be like, let me see if I can dive in and fix it as part of like a maintenance kind of thing. But okay. I don't just offer MailChimp services because I don't use MailChimp very much. Like I've been in there a few times for clients and that's it, you know? So yeah, I, I definitely try to keep it refined. I think you talked about that in something that I watched of yours that you, you've got to keep your services and like, you know, that's why I only use Divi um, for 90% of my websites. I only use Divi to design with because I know it so well yeah. and it keeps my process flowing and it doesn't you know, hold me down, like hold me back or anything. It's so. such a great lesson. It's so important. The shiny object syndrome is what all <laughs> web designers face. Like there's so many tools, so many options. Nowadays, it seems like it's worse than ever. Like I'm sure you've seen it just like I have since we're both in the Divi community. There's so many Divi people who are using other themes now and trying other stuff. And that can be okay. But if you have eight different tools that you use, that's eight different things to keep up with. And mm -hmm. to learn and to see how they update and adjust. And it's just, it's incredibly unprofitable <laughs> in the <laughs> long run to do that. If you give yourself constraints and have a limited tool set, you can learn it really good and you can excel with your tools. I, I learned that as a drummer. Like I only had a few, you know, I had like my cymbals and my certain drums and I got really proficient and good with what I had right in front of me. Whereas, you know, sticking in the musician realm, if you have a guitar with 3 million effects, it can be overwhelming to decide what to choose. So it's kind of the same deal with websites yeah, uh, or, yeah. or all your tool, all your tools, email yeah, marketing, or your services. Cause you know, services. I, I, I mean, I used to offer social media and I took like a year break from social media stuff because I had my child and you know, we I was not in it. And then I came back and everything had changed. And I'm like, I don't know how to do social media anymore. Like, I, I don't know. How to run I, ads. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like when I really started looking at your brand, that was the case. I feel like I remember you initially as more social media mm -hmm. and then the tables turned to email marketing. How actually I'm kind of curious. So when did you get into web design April? Was that 2019 or 18? Um, well, I've been doing some sort of web design since 2010, I think. Oh, okay. Um, when I worked for the college, they yeah. they gave me a big project to redesign por a portion of the website. And so that was with a, um, a program called Sitefinity. I've never heard mm. of anyone that knows what that is. But it was <laughs> I haven't terrible. heard that. It was terrible. <laughs> um, and so, and then I, uh, I worked for another organization, a nonprofit that used WordPress and I'm like, Ooh, I like WordPress. This is better. Um, and then, um, when my daughter was born, I started my own business when she was a year old because I didn't want to work full time out of the home away from her. I wanted to work when she napped or when I was at preschool or something and, and kind of have that flexibility. So I started my web design business, um, yeah, 2018. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was wondering like, you know, when that actually became an actual business that you that you did working mm -hmm. from home. How long did it take to make email marketing a main service then? It was probably another year because I, I learned about Flowdesk. I think it was like April of 2019. Um, and so I started playing around with it for myself. And then I started offering it as um, for my clients. 
And I really started liking it. And I can't remember when I made it one of my main things. Cause I think for a while I had like marketing services, very generic. Um, I had SEO on there for a while, even though I'm not like fully like, I like SEO. I think SEO is wonderful, but I just don't feel like I offer enough to make that one of my main services. Yeah. Do you link so. SEO in with your builds just as like foundational SEO? Is that how you yes. mentioned that? Yeah, I, yeah I, I always have basic SEO included. And then I'll do, um, per your course, SEO boost um, for like clients that are like asking about SEO and want a little extra. And then... Um, Side note, do you find that clients understand and love the SEO boost term? Yes. And well, and here. Like, that was like, that's literally boost. why, that's literally why I was like, I'm not an SEO guy, but everyone liked the idea of boost. Like my conversion rates on SEO boost for 500 or a thousand dollars for, for each different tier was crazy. Cause we were like, yeah, I could use an SEO boost. Yeah. Cause it's not, it's not like the, you know, huge strategies that like Michelle offers, but it, it's, you know, it's just a boost. It's just, you know, let's put our best foot forward. And that's how I explain it to my clients a lot of times. We're just putting our best foot forward um, with what we've got. And if we want to do more, we can. But if not, a boost is great. So. Oh, I love that. Do you uh, do you do you carry that same like principle and methodology to your email marketing with the idea of? I guess you can't really do a boost with email marketing unless you just did a time like let's try three months of it. Uh, I, cause I guess one question I had is how the heck do you price email marketing? I'm sure everyone's really <laughs> curious about that. Do you do it hourly? Do you do it per tier that you have set up? Like how, how have you learned to price email marketing? Oh my gosh. It's been really hard because I have not found a whole lot of people like, you know, you provided a proven path for web design. There is not much out there for a proven path for email marketing for mm. offering it as a service. Um, you know, I've done, uh, list builders and, uh, with Amy Porterfield and, uh, email marketing magic with, um, Pat Flynn, oh, yeah. but I have not found anyone that's like, here's how to offer this as a service. So maybe, maybe down the line, I'll do that. <laughs> but um, Sounds you know, I, like a great course <laughs> from April. <laughs> yeah, that will be my 2024 course. Um, <laughs> no, um, it, it, but for pricing, I, you know, I kind of looked at it hourly, how much time it takes. And then I kind of try to factor in like, results what kind of results is this going to provide so my setup fee obviously is one of the lowest because it does not it, it gets results as and it adds people to your list but then the sales sequence and the um nurture sequence that is more results driven because the that's actually the con converting the people on your list to customers that the goal of that is is to convert those people so those are a little higher um on a, well, the monthly one is not higher, but over a year it is because, you know, if you're paying me monthly to send out an email for you and then sure. I'll include that a lot of times with my maintenance plan. So you, if you're on my VIP maintenance plan, we can do website stuff and we can do, um, email marketing. Okay. Gotcha. Basis. Yeah. And then how, like practically when you price these out, are you comfortable with sharing like typical price points? Like, do you, do you judge it by the time that you have involved with it or is it value based? Like, I'm just terribly curious how the heck you price email. <laughs> um, a lot of times I'll do it by email. So, um, like generally like 125 per email for me, but then if I bring in my copywriter, she charges, um, Oh gosh, I'm trying to think how much she charges in the past. We've done about 1500, for a sales sequence. And then like the setup fee, depending on if they get a lead magnet or not, it can be about 625 is the starting point for that. And then it can go up from there, depending on how much work we're doing on the lead magnet. If we're designing it, if we're, you know, uh, helping them with the content and the strategy and all that stuff. So that one kind of starts around 625. And then for a monthly newsletter, that one is usually, it's usually included in my maintenance plan. So I haven't priced, I'm trying to think what I would price. I can't remember what I'd price. Yeah, if it yeah. was someone I, off the street. I imagine if you have all that set up, the monthly newsletter would probably be the easiest aspect of that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we set up a template and then we just reuse that every month, but yeah, we, yeah. um, you know, we do the content. Uh, a lot of times we'll do blog posts with that and that's part of their email uh, okay. strategy. So as to do, we'll 
help them with their blog posts. We'll bring Michelle in and we do like a blog post, uh, an SEO blog post and my copywriter will write it and then I will post it and do uh, a newsletter. Well, so I'm so glad. Thank you for sharing that, by the way, because I was curious <laughs> on how, how that would all work out. I imagine just like all pricing, it could vary drastically with variables and skill set and mm -hmm. results. So th I think w the thing with email marketing is it's like with a sales sequence, people are going to invest in something that is specifically to get sales. So, and they can measure that. If you charge 1500 bucks for a sales sequence and they average, like, let's say their average sale is 500 bucks. Well, it only takes three people to convert from that email to make that up. And then it's all profit from there. So that's, I think it's an easier way to sell email marketing. I almost wonder if email marketing is a little easier to sell than websites in general, if people don't understand that it's a sales tool. So mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. You just mentioned the blog post and the email working together. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I meant to ask that earlier. So with the idea that I had of like a, a weekly dose of Josh, and it sounds douchey, I don't know what to call it right now. <laughs> my question would be, should I make that a blog post or should I just have that via email? But then you know me, April, I hate, I hate, I hate creating something that is not going to be on my website for years to come. Like, the idea of creating content that's just going to vanish like stories mm -hmm. and reels. I, I just can't stand it. So my thought would be to do a weekly thing that would be an email and a blog post. But then of course, now I'm starting to make it complex. So where do you draw the line between an email, just being an email versus it being like a blog post or you start an email that leads to a blog post. So I have stopped blogging unless it is with SEO in mind. Because mm. for a while there, I was just, you know, writing up these short little posts and Google dinged me for it. Oh, <laughs> and is that because so, it's not related or just, it was, you know, blogs? it wasn't related. It wasn't long enough. It wasn't targeted enough. And so then Google just started saying, oh, well, this website is irrelevant. And so uh, thank goodness for Michelle. I keep bringing up Michelle. She has been a lifesaver for me. Um, and Josh, you recommended or referred her to me or however you say yeah, that. I forget Maybe. how, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's yeah. been a web designer pro, so I, she talks about you as well. If anyone <laughs> doesn't know Michelle, yeah, she's been on the podcast multiple times. She is our SEO guru. She's the resident SEO expert and uh, web designer pro and our copywriter specialist now too. Like her, I don't know if you've used her for copywriting punch-ups or tune-ups, but she's like really, really savvy with that as well. She's, she's great. Yeah, I have. She, she undersells herself. She's just always like, Oh, I don't know if I'm good enough at this. I'm like, Michelle, you are fantastic. Like <laughs> know, absolutely right? fantastic. Um, but anyway, so yeah, she, um, so I've totally lost where I was. <laughs> uh, you made a great point though about not, using it as a blog post unless yes. it's meant for SEO. Yes. So I just, I am very intentional about my blog post. I don't do them very often. Like I'm, I'm doing them like quarterly, honestly, but I do them really well. I bring in my copywriter and she writes them uh, for me. And she, no, she, I bring in Michelle and do her content briefs. Like we do a very intentional job on my blog post for my clients. We do that too. We have a, we, We'll do them monthly though for them. Mm. So yeah, um, is it, just, isn't one of your blog posts high up for Flowdesk too? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's my email marketing page. It's oh, okay. um, last I checked the number one result for Flowdesk specialist. Wow. Hold on. Live test. <laughs> make sure we're still there. Flowdesk specialist. Let's see. Flow, Flowdesk specialist. Did I get that right? It's no, that, no W. There, it's just, oh, F no w. Oh, yeah, a lot of people wow. put w in there. <laughs> that changes a lot there. Yep. <laughs> First organic result. How about that? <laughs> April Creative email marketing flow desk service. No W. Yep. Wow, that's awesome, April. That's freaking sweet. Yeah. Michelle uh, clued me into it because I was on page like two by myself. And then she came in and um, helped me tweak it and get it where it needed to be. So. How have you found that to drive leads? Just by yes. that, that yes. SEO. So that's another example of like having a, so you, so essentially you whittle down your services from all the stuff that you were doing earlier, the video, the social media, everything honed in on email marketing, did a simple version of that, got results for clients. You've expanded on that and you niche down with a tool 
And then now you're using SEO to bring people into that with a proven system. I'm just, I'm, I'm basically just shedding light on the entire process that you did to offer email marketing. And now you're excelling with it, which is incredible. Like what an awesome case study this is on how to do this. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's been, uh, it's been exciting because, you know, it's hard to rank for web designer Kentucky or anything like that, but, um, I don't actually, know. Yeah, I feel like you might be able to crush that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot some, of, well, Louisville's a big city, so yeah. there's a lot of web designers there. So, yeah. Um, and with the SEO people that come to you, do you find that they need web design services? Does that work hand in hand or are they just primarily hiring you for email stuff? Some have just hired me for email work because um, that's what they were looking for. But then I have had because the the problem I'm running into, the small problem with it is I work with WordPress and so mm -hmm. and Divi. And so people have come to me with like a Squarespace site and I'm like, I'm not touching that. I know yeah. Squarespace people I'll refer you out, but I can help you with the email marketing part of it. Um, so and, and if they're not ready for a redesign, but, you know, if they're coming to me for email marketing, my hope is down the road, they will want. Um, a redesigned website with WordPress. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I face that same problem as you know, because we're both WordPress and Divi folk, but um, I have such a Midwestern, like Kentucky, Ohio thing to say, like, we're the Divi folk. Um, <laughs> but, you know, now, you know, April, I'm teaching a lot of people who use Squarespace or Webflow or something different. And the thing is, is yes, I have Divi specific and WordPress specific tutorials and resources, but I have a lot of other stuff. Most everything else is evergreen and uh, platform agnostic, as we call it in Web Designer <laughs> Pro. Like it, you know, and I just, I say that to say, I wonder if you could do something similar at some point, offer like a general email marketing service that is not necessarily platform specific that could be i want it'd be kind of cool i wonder if that would be something that you could implement at some point although there's nothing wrong with staying niche and really really capitalizing like i could see you at some point we were talking about this earlier with the course you're going to do eventually which i'm definitely going to stay on you to do because i think it's needed <laughs> the e selling email marketing for web designers holla if uh, anyone wants that just leave That's us a niche. comment <laughs> leave us a comment go send april a message um <laughs> But I say that in all seriousness, because I, I feel like you could, the way I would see that as you step further into the webpreneur world, which I know we've talked about in pro together, is you could have like a flow desk beginner crash course training program, whatever. Then you can have like an advanced one where you're really getting into sequences and automations and tagging and stuff like that. And then you could have your like sell this for web designers service, like sell the, you know, or you could have a general type of email marketing cheat sheet or something like that to get everyone through the door. And like you just said, if you have enough results with using the tools you like and trust, people will go that route. Like I have, I have a ton of people who come to Web Designer Pro using Elementor or Squarespace, and then now they're suddenly trying Divi out and they're using the tools that we use. So it can work both ways. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share some thoughts on that because I feel like that could be a really, really exciting next step for you as you get further into the email marketing side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Actually I, I am working on um, a, a, a basics course mm. for right now. Um, not sure when it will actually get done. I was hoping summer, but things keep piling up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the perils of having a scaling growing business, good challenges yeah. to have, but it just keeps the passion projects on the side, but you are scaling. I think something we'll talk about, in some other separate capacity is that you are scaling to be able to manage this. Actually, that's an interesting question I was wondering about. Like, do you think you could do this if you hadn't started scaling and hiring out and delegating work? Because if you're going to do web design, maintenance care, and getting to put your marketing hat on and doing email marketing for clients, that is a lot for one person. So yeah, how do you manage that? How, how has scaling helped you manage this? Oh my goodness. I could not do this without my copywriter, Kelly Burchett. She is fantastic. I've known her since the first day of college. Um, we met in journalism one-on-one, -on -one. <laughs> but she, uh, she has just really helped me take this to the next level because, you know, I can provide all the design stuff and I can help a little with copy, but that's not my expertise, nor do I want it to be because mm. it slows me down when I have to write stuff for clients. And it's a whole other, I feel like, a whole different creative process. And so I don't do copy, but bringing her in, it just elevates everything. All of the websites we write and the copy or the content for, um, 
emails and blog posts that we write is just so much better than what I could do. And I wouldn't be able to serve as many clients. I wouldn't be able to move projects as long as fast. Like it's just, um, it, it's, it's really helped. And then since then I have now started bringing on, um, um, uh, Alexis has been helping me a lot with, uh, design work and Jacob and Dan have been helping me with development work. And so just these things that would normally slow me down and keep me stuck for days trying to figure them out. I can just p- toss it over to them, get something else done. They throw it back and then we move the project along. So, Oh, that's it- so awesome. Well, and what you're shedding light on is why I, have crafted web designer pro the way it is as it is with people who are like really good in, in certain aspects. And I, I really don't mean to sound like salesy with web designer pro, but I am very, I'm kind of bullish on it now. Cause it's freaking awesome. Like you are the exact, the exact like shining student of how to utilize web designer pro you taken the processes, you've refined your business and then you figured out your superpower. And then now you're filling in the gaps of stuff that you don't want to do or need help with. You mentioned Jacob, expert developer. You mentioned uh, Dan, security expert guru. Uh, you've got Michelle in your corner. And, you know, I'm happy to guide you where I can. I feel almost like insignificant now with where you're at. <laughs> I feel like you're going to be coaching me in the next couple of years, April. Like, so it, I just love that. I say that to say publicly, I love that you're utilizing pro like, like I'd hoped somebody would. So that's off to you. How did you find your superpower, by the way? What is your superpower, April? My superpower? Um, what's I'm your not... main one? You've got like six that we talked about in this conversation so far. <laughs> but what's your what, what do you feel like your superpower is with, with uh, in relation to like your your services? Oh, gosh, I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think. Web design, I love web design. I love design. I really like, I wanted to be a designer since I was in high school. Um, I was scared of doing art though, because I can't hand draw. (laughs) So they make you take art classes when you do graphic design. But I really do love design. I get into that like flow state with design. But then I also think that, um, and, and, you know, this is not true of most people in Web Designer Pro, but I feel like a lot of web developers that I met before like meeting you and the web Divi community, so many web developers have no personality. (laughs) And I just felt like, you know, I I try to keep things really simple with my clients and explain it well and, you know, be personable um, and, and, you know, someone that they, you know, feel like they could also be friends with, you know? So I, I just, I think having that, you know, nice, friendly, Southern personality (laughs) helps. Uh, and then just loving design and, and feeling like it's a, it's fun. I get that fun every day. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Yeah. I think there's something to, uh, having the easygoing, friendly Midwestern vibe. Is Kentucky considered the South? I mean, you're who you ask, I feel more South because we're almost in Tennessee. Yeah. In the civil war was Kentucky North or South? We were neutral. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure it was probably split. Yeah, because if you get into the Tennessee realm, I'm sure those boys were all oh, yeah. about <laughs> fighting for the South. But I mean, like Kentucky, we I can get to Kentucky in an hour and a half from like from Cincinnati. So that's yeah. very northern still feeling. Yeah. And I mean, I used to live in Owensboro, Kentucky, which is um, a little more in the middle of the state, a little more north. And it feels very different than down here in Mayfield, Kentucky, where it's we're a little more self. <laughs> mm, fascinating. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take off us off on too much of a tangent, but now I'm really interested to find out Kentucky's stance in the civil war and how many people were split uh, or yeah. did no one fight in Kentucky? I, I'm not actually sure. I'm not the civil war. Buff, so Sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the civil war spot, Bring but I'm totally going to look this I'll up I'll now. I'll talk wars and all sorts of stuff with you. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it was like a neutral ground. Like I think people came here for like oh. assistance and stuff. I think. Okay. I don't know. Well, I'm if anyone knows, let us know on the, the, uh, <laughs> leave a comment on the, the post for this episode. You had no idea, April, you'd be coming on to talk civil war history for Kentucky. My husband will be not proud at all. He'll be like, you are 100% wrong. <laughs> yeah. Have a message me. I'd love to have a chat with him so we can figure yeah. out where Kentucky stood. Uh, well, April, this has been absolutely awesome. I really, really appreciate you sharing some insight on what you've done. Like I said, you're just a, a shining case study of, of, building your business your way, refining your services. You have a nice why with being a stay-at-home mom and being able to work from home. You came from the 
education world where I remember you shared with me, like, you know, I think you were working like eight hour, 80 hours a week at one point with everything you're doing. And, um, uh, I love, I've loved seeing you build a life of freedom and the lifestyle that you love to live. And we've even talked vacation spots now, since you guys are uh, <laughs> headed down to Alabama, sometimes where we, uh, tend to vacation at. So like I've seen you, uh, carry not only a successful business and growing business, but you've carried that in your personal life and being able to manage it with scaling. So all that to say, April, I absolutely love what you're doing. Keep at it. What a blast getting to know the email marketing side of things. One final question for you, but before we get to that, you mentioned a free resource you have, or is there anywhere you would like folks to go to, to check you out or maybe uh, something they could grab on? Yeah, um, you can just head over to my website, aprilraycreative.com. And um, I am just putting the finishing touches. So by the time this goes live, it will be there. A email newsletter, template, and workbook. Oh, I'm picking the heck up out of that <laughs> as I get mine going. Because I really this conversation really solidified a couple things for me personally. And for anyone considering a weekly or monthly newsletter, it's to have those different areas of content and then make sure you stay top of mind, but not overdo it. And then also the idea of it not being a blog post was a huge takeaway for me because I didn't even think about the SEO components with that. Mm -hmm. If I'm sharing something that's not necessarily web design business related. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't want Google to ding you. <laughs> yes. 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 Michelle's listening to this going, amen. We do not want Google things. Uh, April last question if somebody wants to start offering email marketing, but they're feeling a little overwhelmed with all the things that we covered, because you are a little bit more of on the advanced stage, what would you recommend they start with? Or what would you recommend when April got started doing email marketing? What, what did you wish you would have done the first, you know, maybe six months? Um, so I would definitely recommend that Marketing Made Simple book by Donald Miller. It just really gives a framework for how you can do this and, and what should be included. And then just trying to find where your skill sets match into some of those those offerings, those things that you can do. Are you great at design? Are you great at copy? Um, and then maybe bring in some other people to help you um, form the team. So um, yeah, I, I definitely would recommend that Donald Miller book. And then I, I think that a very easy starting point is just like a setup, help people get set up, help them figure out their lead magnet, help them set up a, an account on, you know, whether it's Flowdesk or ConvertKit or MailChimp or whatever, help them get set up with that. And then you just kind of go from there. Ah, that's beautiful. And until your course comes out, which I'll recommend once it does, I recommend Amy Porterfield's List Builder Society. Um, if anyone wants to check that out, you can go through my link at joshhall.co slash LBS. Reason being is not only can you apply what you learn to your business, but you can literally use that as a template for your clients. So like when your client asks you, I don't know what to blog about or send emails about, you can just take what you learn there or in this episode and just share it to them. Um, so I said to say with all courses, just remember that knowledge is not just yours. It's now you can use it for your clients. So, um, yeah, you've really taken that approach. By the way, April, I have to say publicly, I was going to tell you this off, off when we stopped recording, but you have come a long way on video. Um, <laughs> I remember just a few years ago, you were very, very shy and reserved on video, but you are like, you're getting like pro status. So hats off to your video game and uh, just communication <laughs> as well. Thank you. Yeah, I got the mic. Uh, one of the mics, I think you recommended the blue, the blue Yeti. Called? Blue Yeti. Yep. Got that one. And uh, great way to go. Uh, I, I literally film a loom once a day for my clients. So I've gotten more comfortable for sure. That is interesting how that helps, isn't it? Like literally just looming clients, you get used to talking to a camera, but there's no pressure. Like you don't have to be on a podcast or a video show. You just send something to a client and you will get better at communicating and condensing your words and being more thrift and just getting used to looking at a camera, which is awkward. It's you, oh, you know, it like it a is. natural thing for a human just to stare at a camera until you do it every day. So I'm glad to hear that's worked out for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, though. <laughs> awesome. All right, April. Well, I think the next time you come on is probably when uh, your course will be launched, which I'm super <laughs> excited about. Again, I think there's quite a few different ways you could you could go with your webpreneur services, but I definitely see a need for, like you mentioned earlier, offering email marketing as a web designer. So chew on yeah, that one. I'm sure you'll wake up at like three in the morning tonight thinking about that, what to call that, and then yeah. <laughs> we can have a chat about mapping that out. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Josh, thank you so much, though. I just want to say I'm very grateful that I found you when I did, because it really I don't know, like where it would be without having taken your courses and finding your community and, and you know, just working with you one on one. So I'm just very grateful that you've come into my life and helped me grow my business. Oh, April. Well, thank you for that. That means a lot to me. I, again, it's the pleasure is all mine because you do the work, uh, the, the, for people who, who learn, like it's one thing to learn and get information, but it really is all about applying it. So to see what you've done with your business is incredible. I'm going to take, I'm going to take what you just said there and I'm going to put it on my little happy, my little uh, happy wall, my smile wall of <laughs> testimonials. Cause you're a, a great example of how to do it. So what an exciting chapter, April. Like you've got to this point now, you're at a whole other level with your mindset, your business, uh, your specialty. So yeah, this is this is super exciting. Thank you so much for your time today, April, and for sharing the goods with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Boom, there we are, friends. That is what is behind the curtain for April's business on how she offers and sells email marketing to her web design clients. Again, Nowadays, you've got to sell results. You've got to help web designers grow their business. You can't just build a pretty website. So that third category, like I mentioned, is so important to decide on how you can help clients get results with their website that you design. April is a prime example of how she chose email marketing. So even if you decide not to do email marketing itself for clients, I hope hearing April's story and how she specialized and went niche in this and how she's implemented it, I hope that gives you some inspiration to do something similar. And definitely for those of you who are interested in email marketing for your web design clients, be sure to connect with April. Her website is aprilraycreative.com. Go there to get connected with her and maybe send her a, a message saying you heard her on the podcast. And as we talked about, I think a course is in her future on email marketing for web designers. So I'm very excited about that. And the last thing I want to know before we head off here is I want to encourage you to connect with both April and me inside of Web Designer Pro. She has been a founding member of my membership, Web Designer Pro. So when you join that, you get to meet awesome entrepreneurial web designers like April and over 115 other web designers as of right now and myself to help you coach coach you through your services to make sure you have the best offers possible. So join us over in Web Designer Pro. To do that, go to joshhall.co slash pro and I'll see you in there. And again, aprilraycreative.com to connect with April. Thanks, friends. See you on the next episode.